I believe superpowers are for everyone. Too far-fetched? Think again. By majority, superheroes start out as moral individuals. Think of Spider-Man, for example. He is just like us, no special abilities or extraordinary talents. Then one day, he got bitten by a radioactive spider, and that changed everything. He became stronger and more flexible. He could now climb walls and ceilings, and through a gadget that he designed, he was able to shoot web out of his wrists. Tony Stark was a real-life genius. <laughs> by the age of 19, he graduated MIT with two master's degrees. So he built a powered suit of armor that allowed him to become superhero. So he became Iron Man. Daredevil got blinded in an accident by a radioactive substance. As he was rescuing a man from an oncoming truck, he got blinded and lost basically completely his vision. His remaining senses reached superhuman ability. So now he developed a radar sense that allowed him to feel the environment around him. Now, these are not the only superheroes in the world. They are a part of a much bigger universe, and so are we. So let's go, go back and see who were the superheroes of three million years ago. It was our ancestors who figured out that our bodies are limited, so they started using materials like wood or stone, harness their power, and use them as tools. They use them to feed, hunt, and accomplish tasks. These tools allow them to do things that they couldn't do before, but that was only the beginning. Slowly, we also realize that our body is limited, our body is fragile, and our skin is sensitive. So we build shoes for our fit. We also build clothes to protect us from harsh environments. And we build body armor to protect us for, from attacks. Now, these early technologies allowed us to overcome some of our limitations. We now became enhanced. As early as 1286, we invented eyeglasses that allowed us to overcome vision impairment. And today, we have hearing aids that allows us to overcome hearing impairment. The way we experience the world today is through our senses. Signals from the senses travel to the brain, and the brain figures out the rest. Everything you see, everything you hear, you taste or smell is the product of your brain. In fact, the way you experience the world around you is unique to yourself. And even though you may believe that this experience is the best possible experience, today I'm going to let you down. You are completely blind, you are completely deaf, and you are completely unaware of the most of the things that surround you. Can you see radiation? No. What about infrared light? No. Can you see or can you hear ultrasonic waves? I don't think so. Bummer, right? But there is a way. What if I tell you that there is a way around those limitations? And that is exactly what my research has been about for the past six years as a PhD student at the Electronic Visualization Lab at UIC. And we call it human augmentics. The answers we are trying to answer are, how can we add an extra sense? How can we add an extra capability? How can, I, how can we augment humans so that we can overcome our limitations? What does it mean to be augmented, not only from a personal standpoint, but also from a socio-political context? Now, these technologies, what they do is that they actually work very similar to the human body. There are sensors that sense the environment around you, the, and then we have computing power that processes those inputs, and then we have feedback mechanisms that alert the user of what is happening. Now imagine you're wearing smart glasses, and now you can see electrom electromagnetic waves. So now you can actually see radiation around you. You can see the gamma rays coming out of the sun. You can actually see Wi-Fi signals as they travel through space. Or imagine walking into an immersive virtual reality environment that allows you to go and visit Mars. So we started thinking and we asked ourselves, how can we see the invisible? How can we make the invisible visible? So we built a suit 
that allowed us to feel the environment haptically on our own body. So as you walk and you get close to a wall, now you can suddenly not only see the wall, but you can also feel the wall on your body. Or as you go outside, you can actually feel the traffic around you. Or if you are alone in the night and somebody is creeping from behind, you can actually feel that too. And we called it spider sense. And I actually have it right here with me. So the initial proof of concept was 13 sensors, and now she's only wearing three. Um, this is, we basically took a bunch of cables, we constructed the boxes, and we added sensors. And each box has an ultrasonic rangefinder that emits a pulse. If there is an obstacle, that pulse is going to bounce back, and that's how we measure distance. There is also, as you can see, a robotic arm that rotates. Now, this arm, when it rotates, it will apply pressure to your skin. So the closer you get to an object, the more pressure you feel. Thank you. Now, what's fascinating about this technology is the fact we, we put it on, on people, and without any training, without expertise, they immediately were able to walk around, they were able to uh, navigate in environments and avoid obstacles. Immediately, the moment they put it on, they knew how to use this new sense. So how does, so, and we did some more experiments. We went outside to the campus. We walked around. We went to the library. And my favorite, we had incoming attackers <laughs> attacking whoever was wearing spider sense. And he had to dodge them by throwing ninja stars. And people were actually able <laughs> And people were actually able to hit the incoming attacker. Now, how does this work and why? Well, it's all because of the brain. Famous neuroscientist David Eagleman thinks of the brain as a general purpose computing machine and the sensors as peripheral plug and play devices. It doesn't really matter what the input is, the brain is going to figure out how to use it and it's going to learn. In fact, everything you do, you have to learn. It's either speech or walking or communicating with people, the brain does not come hardwired with that knowledge. And your experience and the way you live, that's what's going to go into the brain. The brain is going to learn how to do those things. And the result of that is that the brain grows. And when I say grows, I actually mean that it physically grows. And also, the weight is going to change. If you, start music, if you start learning the guitar, and if you can somehow weigh your brain today and tomorrow, you would see that the brain is actually going to be heavier. So everything we learn goes to the brain, either a musical instrument or a sport. The brain is going to adapt and it's going to learn how to use, it, use that new sense or new ability. I still remember the first time I went ice skating. It was really difficult. I had to hold myself from the boards. I had to put conscious effort into every step so I don't fall down and crash. But then, after a while, I could skate without any assistance. And a few years later, and I could actually sprint while controlling the puck through a stick and avoiding 200-pound players that wanted to crush me. And this time, everything was subconscious. I wasn't thinking about it. I was just thinking where the puck is, what I need to do. I was thinking of the game. Result of my hard training, I made the Greek national ice hockey team. Now, as Wayne Gretzky famously said, I skate where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. And that's exactly how neuroplasticity works. It can get, to, get us where we need to go. And neuroplasticity is also how we can make human augmentix technologies a second nature. The first time you're wearing spider sense, you are feeling sensations on your body. But suddenly, you realize what the, those sensations are, and you feel the environment mapping on your own skin. And then as you wear spider sense more and more, that's going to become se second nature. You're not going to think about it anymore. You're just going to know that something is around you. Neuroplasticity is the power of the brain. It is the reason why Spider-Man learned how to control his newfound abilities, climb walls and ceilings. It is the reason why Daredevil developed his radar sense. Now, if we could, uh, everybody please close their eyes for a moment. Imagine you're in a room. It's dark. 
It's very dark. In fact, it's so dark, you cannot even see your hands. Now, you know that there is an exit, but you don't know where. So you start walking, looking for the exit. Suddenly, you stumble. You're down, you just fell down. You feel scared, you don't know what's going on. You cannot see anything. How does it feel? It feels exactly like, like the daily life of the visually impaired. Think your life in complete darkness. You wake up in the morning, you grab a cup of coffee, and you get ready for work. Now you're outside, walking to catch the bus. That was your head. You just banged your head into a stop sign. But how would you know the cane is not designed to detect obstacles at head height? Thank you, you can open your eyes now. It's amazing the things that we have accomplished in the last 50 years. We walked on the moon, we put rovers on Mars, we carry supercomputers in our pockets, we can experience alternate realities, and in a way we can actually see the invisible. Today we know how many steps we have taken, we know how many calories we have burned, we know how many hours we have slept. Think of all the information you have at the flick of your finger, GPS location, weather data, social media that connect us instantly with everybody around the world. So, yet, this is all we have for the visually impaired. A cane. So I think we can do better. It's time to move on. We took SpiderSense, that was an early prototype, and now SpiderSense is a, is a startup. We sat down with people who have impairments, who are visually impaired, and we talked to them. And we asked them what their problems are. And, they, and we learned things like the fact that they bang their heads into street signs, or that they get hurt inside their own home to the point of getting a concussion. So we worked with them. We made SpiderSense smaller and more efficient. And now we're working with them on the algorithms and the sensors. So today, I present you SpiderSense 2.0. SpiderSense 2.0 is a wearable haptic jacket that this time has the sensors embedded into the fabric. No more cables. We also substituted the robotic arms with vibration motors and we increase the range to 15 feet. Now, this is not a concept, this is real. In fact, I'm actually wearing SpiderSense right now. So let's have a quick demo. Vasya is gonna walk on the stage. I'm going to blindfold myself, and she's gonna walk around me. And I'm going to point her direction. So right now, I'm mostly feeling uh, the wall behind me, um, okay. So now I feel nothing. Now I feel her on my right side. She's walking, she's behind me. Now she's this way on the left side. She's right here, right here. And now she's on my right side again. And ooh, I don't feel the sensor anymore, but I can feel this one which means that he, she has probably crouched. Now she's up again. Now she's on my right, going that way. She's behind me. And now I felt her that way, and, and now I don't feel anything, so she's probably walking away. Thank you. We are here to help 285 million people who are visually impaired, and 8 million of them are right here in the US. Now, we're not gonna stop here. This technology can help firefighters in smoky and cloudy environments so that they can navigate safely to openings, so that they can feel if there is an obstacle. It can help policemen and soldiers be more aware. This technology can change lives. We believe superpowers are for everyone. So let's save the lives of our soldiers, firemen, policemen. Let the blind see. Thank you. <laughs>